making tonight is um sprouted grain bread and so the first step would be to sprout your grain we know that when we sprout these grains and stuff it makes these um, nutrients more um, bioavailable where we're able to absorb those nutrients and use them and stuff so that's why we try and um, incorporate these sprouted grains into our diet so what we're using today is wheat and this is um a soft white wheat here but you can use other like um ancient grains such as like spelt and um tri-kale and things like that but tonight we'll we'll be using um wheat the recipe that we were we are going to be using is going to call for two cups of sprouts so that's what i'm starting with today is two cups of uh, what is known as wheat berries so these are actually grains of wheat here they're just uh like such as seeds you know like if you would, were to plant these these would um grow into like wheat in a field and stuff like that so and then they would grind these and make this into flour right here but what we're doing tonight is we're going to sprout these um wheat berries here you can just use any basic um this is a one quart jar this is what i do i have a quart jar here and right here this pint jar up to this line here is two cups so that's what i got here i got two cups of wheat berries that i am just going to put into this jar and why we want to make sure that we have a quart size jar or larger because these things are going to hydrate and get bigger. Here we got our two cups of wheat berries and we want to use warm water because what if we use the warm it's going to help these um, wheat berries here to sprout sooner. We don't want it hot in any type of way just like if you were to touch it and it feels just warm to your touch like like, ooh, I just want to, you know, put my face on it or something like warmth, you know, that type of warmth, not real hot. So then all we're going to do is put this water in to cover. And then I just want to make sure that these are all wet like this. And the main part about this, if you're going to use a regular jar, is that you're not going to screw this on tight. You want that air exchange to be going on. So you're going to lose, leave this loose like such as this and just set it in a corner or something on your counter where it's not going to be really hot, but just warm enough, you know. So this is what you're going to do and you're going to set this aside. And, and this process here is going to take maybe, I would say, two days, at least two days before you're going to be able to use these to make the... Uh, the sprouted wheat bread. So this is the first step here. So after I would say between I would say 12 and 16 hours, you you just keep track of these. Um, and what is going to happen is they're going to rehydrate and they're going to start trying to sprout. But the first telltale sign that you're looking for are these little bubbles here around the edge here. So that's how we know that they're hydrated enough. Once it gets to this stage, this is going to be after like 12 to 16 hours or so. And we know that they have um, absorbed up enough um, water where we can go to the next step of sprouting. What I usually would do here are over a sink, some type of strainer or a colander with small holes. You want to start rinsing these. So. You want to use um, like warm to body warmth, you know, that type, not anything uh, warmer than that. And what we are doing is we want this just to have enough force to the water when it's coming down to be able to rinse this good, you know, shake it around a little bit like this. Just get a good rinse on it. So there is two ways that we can actually proceed from here. So the first way is we can take a tray or a cookie sheet or something like this. And then what I would do is I would take these wheat berries here and spread them out on a tray. And I already have one going here, so I just wanted to bring this in and show you what it's gonna look like. So what we would do is spread these wheat berries on the tray. And then I have a, a clean, wet dish towel that we are going to keep on top of here and keep changing this out and keep it damp. Hopefully they're going to sprout like within, I would say, 36 hours. 
And what most people are familiar with when they're sprouting grains is that we're going to put them back in the sprouting jar or the um, sprouting container that you usually get with the sprouting kits. And what we're going to do is we're going to put clean water back on here. So I already have some of this warm filtered water here ready that I'm going to use to um, refill this jar here when I get done um, getting this back in here. And then what I would do right here is we are going to cover this back, but we're not going to screw it on tight. But what we want to do is just to tilt this so that the water, whatever, if there's excess water in here, it's all going to gather in here because we don't want them soaking in water, but we just want them to stay moist and stuff. And they're going to start going into the sprouting process after that. When you're sprouting in a jar like this, you need to make sure and rinse these, um, this grain like this at least, I would say, two to three times a day here. Um, and what that is, it, it's rinsing off the, um, let's say, like there might be slime accumulating, like the um, stuff is starting to ferment or whatever. So that's why we're trying to, we rinse it off and um, dry, drain it like this and put it back in here. And then we're going to leave it at an angle or else, remember I said, this this is the, the other way where you wouldn't have to rinse it all the time, but it would take a little bit longer for it to sprout and stuff as if you were to do it this way right here. What we are trying to do is catch this this grain, this this um, these wheat berries when they're sprouting, when they just start getting a tail on them because we don't want it to go too long because that is what's going to affect the flavor of your of your actual bread, you know, the product that you produce at the end, it will have a slight bitter taste and stuff to it. So that's why we want to make sure and catch these wheat berries or to time it out where we're going to be able to make our bread in in that time schedule, you know, where, where these are going to be um, at that stage of sprouting so they don't go too far. So this is for the initial mix. I'm going to put two and a half cups water. We're going to take two tablespoons of honey from our half a cup that's for the whole recipe. And we need um, two tablespoons of yeast. So here we're going to go. We're going to start out with two and a half cups of very warm water. We don't want it hot, but we want it to be very warm. Like when we put our finger in there or something, we want it to feel warm to our touch, you know. So we know that our body temperature is what, 98.6, so we know that that's about what the temperature of that water is going to be, maybe a little bit warmer. Okay, and there we go, two and a half cups. So to the two and a half cups, we're going to dissolve two tablespoons of honey, and this is to start... Um, activating the yeast there because not only do we need to get it wet we need it we need to put something in this water to let it i'm just rinsing my finger there <laughs> my hands are clean okay so this is the rest of my honey for the rest of the recipe okay so what we're going to do here is let's dissolve the honey up in here And then let's add our two tablespoons of yeast. And now, after this step right here, we're just going to let this sit here for five minutes to activate the yeast. And then we'll do the first mix. Okay, So it's been five minutes. You can see that the yeast is bubbling and stuff like that bubbled up here. So now we're going to um, do the first mix in. And that's going to be one cup of whole wheat one cup of white, one tablespoon of salt, and a half a cup of oil. So we can put all of this in at this time. And what we're gonna do is just mix it thoroughly, kind of scrape down the bowl, because um, we don't want anything like drying up on the edges here. We wanna keep all our flour and dough all together here 
And these are our wheat sprouted wheat berries. Remember, you see now how we sprouted these and you can see the tails on them. So this is the right stage here that we need to make this bread now. So the other thing that we needed to put into this, uh, well, the sprouted wheat bread would be two cups of sprouted wheat berries. So that's what I'm adding right now. Just like that. Even if you put a little oil in the cup, measuring cup, or even just the, the, the pan spray and stuff, you can see that it, it comes, it releases much easier from the measuring cup and it will be less waste, easier to clean. So, put this stuff aside here and do the, the mix in. Because this is going to be really loose, like almost like a cake batter at first. And then we're going to let this rise for approximately 45 minutes to an hour. And then we're going to do the second mixing of flour. So right here, what we are going to do is I'm going to scrape down this bowl. and wait for it to rise. 45 minutes since we did the first mix in. So now we're gonna mix in another cup of wheat flour, whole wheat flour, and then we're gonna do a cup of white flour. So I want to get this up to the, the point where I'm going to be able to knead it on this board. And remember, I talked about putting a towel over a cutting board or what they usually use is a um, the marble um, pastry boards. But I just use a cutting board, wrap it as tightly as around here as I can. This is a flour sack dish towel. The discoloring is because I use this um, on the other ones too. So it's clean and everything. I just... And these are all towels that I use just for food preparation. And I can tell just by doing this here that I might need a little bit more flour. Um, flour is dependent on, I mean, when, when they say, say approximately, because sometimes we're going to use less, sometimes we're going to use more. It depends on how your, your, your flour is being stored and the humidity. So sometimes... This, this flour is going to already have a lot of moisture already in it if the humidity is high. What I like to do is put a little, because we don't want to add too much more flour to this, because this will make your bread heavy and stuff. Remove this from the bowl right onto the flour, I mean right onto the board. And I'm going to probably work a little bit more flour in here, just enough to get it to the point where it's going to, hold together actually um, and we're gonna and in this process right here we're gonna develop the gluten that's what we're doing when we're kneading this dough and what the gluten it does in here it it's um, the part of the bread or the dough you know that's gonna make this elastic because what we want this dough to be is where it's gonna be able to spring back when we touch it see it's not really springing back yet so we need to um, knead this dough a little more and develop that gluten in here. I'm going to put a little bit more flour here because I can see that it's sticky yet. And I don't want it to be like that sticky. Okay, I'm going to knead it a little more. Stir some more. Okay, now well, let me see how this is doing. No, it's not springing back yet. See, it's kind of starting to come back now. You can see it where it's kind of springing back. We might want to do it just a little bit more. Maybe a few more needs here. and So here we go. We're going to... Oil this because this is really a sticky dough, so you want to make sure that you use enough oil here in this step. Otherwise, your dough will really stick to your your bowl, and you'll probably lose part of your dough. So, 
Then we're going to flip it. Remember to keep the top of your dough soft. And then now we're going to cover it. This is the dough after it's raised. Because right here, we're doing this part right here. So now we're going to, um, just to form it into the, um, I need a little bit of flour just to form it into loaves here. So what we're going to do is this. Get it out. Oh, I should have punched it down first. So this is where I said this thing comes in good at. So you don't have to use so much flour. It keeps your dough from getting heavy. So this is here. So now what I want to do is split this one in half. Okay. Have a scale, it works good, but otherwise, I got a pretty good eye for this. It looks like about in half of there. Okay, I'm gonna move this, but we'll try it with these ones next. Okay, so now that they're well greased, we're gonna form the loaves. What you want to do here is kind of like roll it kind of tight like that. I need a little bit more flour. Kind of roll it kind of tight like that. Just loaf pan here and you need to kind of tuck this under a little bit on the ends and then like that let's roll this out because it's kind of Lumpy dough, but you kind of try and want to get it as smooth as you can. Tuck those under. Because they'll come out if in the rise and in the bake if you don't tuck them under. And your loaf will kind of look split open on the end or something. Okay, so then after this, we're going to cover them lightly and let them raise for one hour. So this is after our hour there. We can see that it's doubled in size. It's probably the perfect stage right there to start it. So we have our oven preheated to 350 degrees. And then we're going to bake it for 30 to 40 minutes. And so they probably got proofed good because you can see they haven't split open. They're nice and dark. And what we're looking for is it might like... When you hit on it, it's going to sound kind of like hollow. And then also, you can also see if it springs back. We can see it springing back, so we know that this is done. Get a stick of butter, rub it on here, because this makes such a, um, a better looking product, actually, and it kind of adds to the flavor of it, too. Because this, see how it's kind of dull here? This is going to make the loaf kind of shiny on top and stuff, so that's why we would do this. I fashioned myself um, something to turn them out on here just so that they can cool and not get. Okay. And that, you know what, this doesn't look really overdone, huh? Usually I like my bread a little bit darker on the bottom. So let's do this. Oh, I poked a hole in there with something. Hold on, it's been, I turned it sideways. But there we go. So from our recipe that we had that started, um, used the two cups of sprouted wheat, we got two loaves of bread from that recipe there. So, and this is what they look like when they're finished.